Hello, my name is Robert Emmett Hernan. I'm head of Bluestacks Productions, Inc., the publisher of Irish Environment, an online resource for environmental matters on the island of Ireland. We're here today for another of our series of conversations on environmental matters with Frank Convery. Frank, you're very welcome today. Delighted to be with you. Frank, you, have, you wear a lot of hats, um, and you wear them very well. Um, and I know that you retired, sort of, uh, from UCD, uh, but you were uh, the Heritage Trust Professor of Environmental Policy in the School of uh, Geography, Planning, and Environmental Policy. Uh, you were the director of the Earth Systems Institute and instrumental in putting that together and helping to run that institute. When, when was the institute started? Just about a year ago now. A year ago. And this is really bringing together various uh, assets within UCD and various schools within UCD uh, to, to address Earth science. Exactly. I mean, the big challenges we face basically can't be solved by any single discipline. Okay. Uh, you need biologists, you need engineers, yeah. you need geologists, you need the whole spectrum really. Um, and we have a lot of the talent you need on mm -hmm. this campus, but we haven't kind of joined the dots and put them together. So this was the first interdisciplinary uh, approach to... At that dealing. scale, yes. Okay. And then we also, uh, my own profession is economics and environmental mm -hmm. economics. So we've also added the kind of economics, policy and law side of things. So mm -hmm. it kind of straddles the social science and the, the other sciences. It's very exciting actually mm -hmm. because when we start talking to each other we begin to discover these kind of interfaces and yeah. so on. And you, you also trained as a, in forest science? I did, yeah. I did forestry in UCD okay. back. And in economics. And then I got interested in economics. Uh, Triggered really by going to Germany, actually, when I was a young forestry student, mm -hmm. 61 or 2. And uh, I was blown away by the prosperity that I observed. I'd never been mm -hmm. abroad before. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized then that the Irish economic model was complete rubbish because mm -hmm. I was in a city that had been literally totally demolished mm -hmm. 15 years previously mm -hmm. and it was full of vibrancy mm -hmm. and beautiful people well clothed you know and i'd come from this gray <laughs> place that had been unscathed by war mm -hmm. it really was a dramatic failure for 15 years so that i said look there's something going on here that i should know more about what was the city which city in stuttgart oh, stuttgart okay yeah. yeah well i'm delighted to have you as an economist because i spent my whole uh, life doing words working with words, and I don't do numbers, so I'm, I'm going to rely on you quite a bit today, Fred. Uh, and you're also, of course, Chairman of CORE, the Sustainable Development Council, yes. which you've been doing for about five years. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and you've also active on a number of EU-wide committees. Um, you've authored a number of books. I happened to see a book of yours yesterday, the most recent one, perhaps, on pricing carbon, mm -hmm. which you wrote with several yes, other people. Yes, yes, yeah. um, And so, today I thought we'd spend our time talking about a new lecture series that you're involved with called Transforming Ireland, and then the work uh, and the priorities that are going on with CORE, uh, sure. and I think there's some overlap there. Yeah, sure. So maybe you could tell the audience about uh, what the Transforming Ireland is, what it is. Well, I suppose it comes from the challenge we're facing <laughs> in Ireland, which is the following. Uh, our costs are quite high, uh, both in terms of people and other resources. Uh, our ability to attract kind of basic manufacturing mm -hmm. and kind of the, the bread and butter that's driven our economy for the last 20 years mm -hmm. is now very, very limited. We're competing with Eastern Europe, we're competing with Asia and so on. So the only way forward really is to be smarter and to be innovative and to develop our own enterprise with new products, new ways of doing things mm -hmm. where you can find spaces in the global economy that depend on brain power as much as other resources. And that's widely accepted to people just isn't it? because what other option do we have? Mm -hmm. The second kind of parallel context is that uh, we're faced with very, very demanding legally binding obligations from the European Union to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, to increase our renewables, to improve our energy efficiency and so on. Mm -hmm. And what the Transforming Ireland series does basically is to join those two strands and say, look, how can we really mobilize our innovation and our enterprise to simultaneously create jobs, to give the economy a boost and to uh, basically solve or contribute to our environmental challenges.
So that's the premise, and the series runs every Friday, mm-hmm. uh, either in the Royal College of Physicians or in the Montclair Hotel. Uh, it's available and uh, open to the public. The whole point really is to communicate with people, uh, 12.30 to 2 every Friday. And uh, we bring together academics and people from the enterprise community, basically. Mm-hmm. So we have business people who are essentially, so it's kind of action oriented, people are actually doing stuff, mm-hmm. not talking about it. Um, and it's very exciting, actually. And I think we, uh, I, we've had seven or eight now, and a main conclusion is mm-hmm. that we can do it. And this runs till uh, till December, the series? Yes, it runs, uh, uh, this kind of pre-summer series runs mm-hmm. until the end of June, mm-hmm. and then we start in September through to December. What issues, uh, any specific issues that, uh, that you're going to be covering or, or areas within that whole uh, area of Transforming Ireland? Well, we're trying to cover the spectrum, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, one area, we had the first three of the series uh, was jointly with Chagas, which is the Agricultural Research and Extension Service. Mm-hmm. And uh, those sessions, and we had kind of have two presentations every day. So mm-hmm. we had six sessions basically focused on, on agriculture because <coughs> farming is a huge source of greenhouse gas. Mm-hmm. It's in fact, internationally, Ireland and New Zealand are the two countries for which agriculture is kind of the biggest source. So yeah. kind of using innovation to meet that challenge was the kind of question we posed. Mm-hmm. And the outcome was um, that there's tremendous scope, actually, if we get our act together mm-hmm. and really get our research people working with the agricultural community and the business community, we can, you know, make it. What, what is the size of the uh, proportion of emissions coming from agriculture in Ireland, do you know? Is it it's almost a third. Third, okay, third. Yeah. Yeah. Of huge the total, country. but it's even more significant in the sense that, in terms of policy, mm-hmm. because about a third of our mm-hmm. emissions are covered by the European Union's emissions trading scheme, mm-hmm. and therefore they're kind of not our problem, in a way mm-hmm. it's kind of being solved by the European trading scheme. Uh-huh. The other two-thirds we have these legally binding obligations and that uh, the kind of non-trading sectors include agriculture and agriculture is well over 40%, it's almost half of the non-trading. Of the non-trading. So it's it's really huge. We also uh, have had and are having a very interesting kind of package on adapting to climate change mm-hmm. because of course we the change is going to happen Anyway, mm-hmm. um, the whole point of, I suppose, reducing emissions is to prevent the change becoming catastrophic. Mm-hmm. But we already have so much uh, gas in the atmosphere that we're going to get some change. Um, and adapting to that is going to be, you know, countries, I would say, it's almost um, a truism to say, I think, that the countries that adapt cleverly and smartly are the ones that will prosper and the ones that don't won't mm-hmm. you know i mean the stakes are quite high you give us a preview about what what you might be covering on adaptation in some of the, the series on transforming that well the the agricultural um economy i suppose mm-hmm. uh, basically when you get more carbon into the air you begin to get different potentials in terms of crops different uh, um, growth periods and so uh, on, you know. Okay. Uh, so we're basically kind of looking at that and saying, well, what, what does this mean? So that's, the, you know, at one simple level, that's that's the adaptation kind of. <laughs> the other, of course, is to look at water. Water is the most kind of dramatically changing resource, I suppose, in terms of climate change that we, uh-huh. we seem to be expecting. Mm-hmm. So I think what, what we mm-hmm. will definitely get is much more intense weather events basically Mm -hmm. and again of course that's eminently manageable if you've organized yourself for it Um, because you know most of us have traveled in warmer climates basically where you get much more intense weather you know those people manage fine because they have the pipes are big enough they have you know they basically got the systems to cope with it yeah, I must say, uh, living in Donegal as I do part of the year, the thought of more water coming to Donegal is quite <laughs> frightening, and, and, and it's it's causing major problems within my marriage. I, I, any adaptation on that area would be much appreciated. For yes. Yeah.